Big news here coming in immediately. You took your stuff that you bought from that retro game store, the Pokemon Gold, as well as the Ocarina of Time. Yeah. You took those down to, what, did you go to a convention? No, you just took it directly to the offices, Yeah, I took it. I took it to PSA, yeah. Like right yeah. to Collector's Universe office, yeah. hand-delivered. Yeah, because I, uh, I was visiting my, well, Michael, who was here right, in the yes. last episode. Uh, he lives in LA, so I was visiting him, and I was like, well, I'll just, uh, you know, cart these down myself, and save myself the stress of shipping <laughs> how, how what, was that easy i didn't i didn't even know they do in-person drop-offs they do what was that like yeah they do if the i think if the value is significant enough they allow you to like bring a bunch of stuff like they have like a they have a dealer room where you can go and you know meet them and and uh go over your stuff together okay yeah was that like fun was it cool yeah Talk, it was, tell me about it yeah so it, was, it, was, it was cool it's <laughs> what um, was the experience i mean the, the the building the lot itself is like enormous like it encompasses quite a few different buildings and um i just it was kind of like you you go in a side door and they're like there wasn't much lighting it was kind of like dark <laughs> it's like is anyone actually here i don't know <laughs> and uh in my head it's like grandiose you know what I yeah mean? i know like... you're expecting like this oh yeah kind <laughs> type of, thing yeah. yeah yeah so um it was i guess it was definitely not what i was expecting but still cool like um you know the dan gomez he, he met me there and and i gave him the games and we just chatted for a few minutes and that's pretty much it it's like a 10 minute thing like you're just literally in out yeah yeah i was there for like 15 20 minutes all right i yeah. mean yeah in my head maybe i'm just thinking of like like an auction house gallery type thing more of a museum maybe in my head where it's like oh you walk into the collector's universe and they have all these big showcases of like oh here's michael jordan's rookie jersey and over there it's like yeah you, you know what i mean yeah but you got those dropped off and you got your grades back already yeah. what was that like two three weeks give or take yeah it was pretty quick like, yeah not bad yeah no they're um seems like they're they're very efficient in their turnaround time i think it just like the actual grading part happened pretty quickly and now it's just kind of like sitting waiting for oh is your stuff shipped yet or no no you're just in okay yeah no. you're in post grading it's the post, po yeah post grading limbo <laughs> yeah yeah which i think is what you sign up for when you that's pay where the, my stuff is right now too when you pay the budget price you know so yeah it's still sitting there i'd assume it's going to be shipped in the next couple weeks so the pokemon gold we'll start that one yeah sure you sent that in um you had the french manual on the back so yeah. double seal yeah you did have them take off the additional seal remove yeah. the french that was one thing we stuff. we discussed when i went there it's like you know can you guys like you know uh, take it out of the case and and take the extra seal off and that's what we talked about yeah and dan was on board yeah I, yeah 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 okay. i said yeah i said it wouldn't be a problem and um it did pretty well. Uh, got 9.2 A++. Yeah, thank you. So above expectations. It actually, you know what happened? Uh, there was a little mistake in grading. And um, I was like, oh, 9.4 A++. That's great. And then uh, I looked at the... the... Hey, you just said 9.2. So... I know, I know. So I'm, I'm explaining it. So <laughs> so what happened was um, they graded it as is with the outer shrink wrap. Because I saw the the photos and uh, and the, the the grader notes. And I was like, oh. They graded it with the outer wrap so i had to message and be like hey what's going on you know we talked about doing this and then uh, yeah it was just a mistake so they they did it within a day like they they had that they, corrected yeah they had okay. it corrected within a day and um the the thing was like when the manual came off the back there was a a slightly a defect that they didn't see before so that's what dropped the grade by point but <sighs> yeah so. the guy oh man <laughs> that's what you sign up for no you know? i i know it just it, it, it that hurts to watch your grade drop real time yeah. to be like yes nine four like yeah yes nine yeah, two, nine, two. <laughs> <laughs> just slightly less enthusiasm it's still good but, yeah it's still good yeah for sure especially with the a plus plus grade 9.2 yeah. a plus plus on that is great um i think what are you into it for i forget what you paid for that one uh i mean it was like it was a big bundle deal so right right i right. can't figure out exactly exactly what i paid but let's say it's around 2800 canadian something like that okay yeah like, yeah cool so, yeah so it was like i knew when i bought it that it was a bit of a risk but i just kind of like i did it because it was there and you know could lower my cost overall yeah i was gonna say it also bundled into your yeah. well the other game you got graded now the big one yeah the big was one. the ocarina of time collector's edition yeah um you picked that one up for i think the Price tag on it, if I remember, was 2,200 Canadian. Yeah, something Is that, like that. Yeah. yeah, okay. So yeah. 1,800 US. Roughly. Give or take, somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah, give or take. Uh, you brought that over here. You mm -hmm. had it in person there. That was nice. Oh, yeah. That was really nice. Yeah. So in sending that off, we both knew that 
there was potential there for that to be well i guess you can go ahead and say yeah i mean i think you and i had both kind of figured at least 9.6 yeah that was exactly like, that was like the bare minimum like no it was way nine six <laughs> yeah yeah for sure and it's like anything else is just a bonus yeah but um yeah so I had go, I had actually got light cleaning on it too. Just okay, to, yeah, might as well. Just might to, as well. That, is that like that greasing the wheel type of thing? You just like <laughs> well, you know, it's the, like the tip without giving a tip. It's bribery. like what if it's like what if the differential is like a giant mushed fingerprint on it? You know, you I might know. as well pay for it. Uh, do you always pay for cleaning? I'm curious because there's a lot of people who swear to God every time they submit, they just like pay cleaning, and like I said, they call it a tip without a tip, but it's like, hey, if this could sway the grade in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Well, Why not just give twenty bucks to them? Yeah, I mean you're grading visual appeal, so you know it makes sense if the if the if the shrink wrap is more pristine looking, more clear, less dirt, grime, whatever's on it. Then yeah, do you pay every time? I usually do, unless I unless I think it's fine as is. But you know, it's like with a game like that, you might as well pay the ten dollars. Okay, it's, interesting. It's $10. Interesting. Like, yeah, no, cares? interesting. I I have never paid grading company cleaning fees. Okay, but you do a lot of it yourself. Well, right? I do. I'll, yeah. I, you you know how I assume. Like, I've, I assume I've, you'd feel. I've done it to maybe like one game, but I I rarely grade stuff. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm fair, just like I don't want to. I don't want to mess with it. Yeah. Like I don't even want to take it out of the freaking case. Yeah. That's how you know. Because okay. I, I knew it had big potential, so it's like. I'm just going to let them handle it. <laughs> so anyways, you gave them the cleaning then, and I yeah. guess it paid off because yeah. uh, you are now the only, on the entire Water Pop Report, Zelda Ocarina Time Collector's Edition, you are the only 9.8 that exists. Yeah. 9.8 A+. Plus. Yeah. Um, kind of nuts. I didn't, oh. I didn't realize it because um, um, I had called a buddy of mine, and and uh, I mean, I looked at the Pop Report. I didn't look at the, the variants. I just looked at the Pop Report like in glance. I was like, oh, yeah, it's great. Like one of five or whatever. And then he's like, that's the only one. I'm like, what do you mean it's the only one? <laughs> it's the only collector's edition that's 9.8 A+. And, and, and you told me that. And even I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Like, I had to double check. because yeah. it, it, it <laughs> One higher. Yeah, this this far in now, it just seems weird that we are 2024, Zelda Ocarina of Time collector's edition. Not what you would call a rare game. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's a lot of them out there. And it even has that gold plating on the front, which mm -hmm. kind of protects it. Or you would at least think it kind of protects it. One nine point eight. Yeah, and uh, I've heard. You know what? I've heard that flaws in the um, in the chromium um, sticker on the front are can bring the grade grade down a lot. That's what I've heard from people. Like off centering or divots or what kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, just kind of like you know scratches in it or like it's very easily scuffed. Even maybe just from like pressure on the front with the shrink wrap. Okay. So I've heard that from people. Like they've they've graded stuff. They expect it to get like you know mid nines and it's come back like nine to eight point five or something because of defects in the chromium i mean mine is i would i would look at my own copy but it's so freaking beat that like <laughs> well let's look it's yeah. right there <laughs> it's an eight point five as is yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's got more problems than it needs to uh yeah you know so the 9.8 copy though now you are pop one i mean what's the plan yeah what do you think of that now like i think i'll have to see it in person to really like know what to do with it right away like so i mean like the... <laughs> instinct is like just like get rid of it <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> like, the immediate you, yeah like what do you need that for but you know at the same time it is i you know if i if i had to pick a game that's like my favorite of all time it's probably ocarina but you know i'm i'm not exactly like into into game collecting full-time so it's like yeah i could i could buy you know art with that kind of stuff and yeah, like so Ocarina, that's a mantelpiece. Like yeah. That is a man. You could arguably hold on to that Ocarina of Time for the next 15, 20 years. Yeah. And it'd probably be a good <laughs> quote-unquote investment. Quote-unquote, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So I think, you know, it's it's kind of the, the collector's dilemma, really. It's like, yeah, okay, I have something here that's not really like what I'm focused on. But at the same time, it's like if I don't have anything to kind of swap it with, then what's the point in selling it? So I think if something comes up and... And then it's like, I need to trade value for another. Then... I was going to talk about that too, because we've talked a lot in the past about trading. Yeah. Because when you have these types of grail, one of one, mm -hmm. best of, uh, holding it is almost more valuable than money. Mm -hmm. Just because you can then acquire stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's desirable. For oh, sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, you like know. second highest grade of one of the greatest games of all time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what it's worth. I mean, we could, it could be 15, 20, 25, 30. Like, I, I genuinely don't know yeah. what it's worth. It's it's uh, it's open season with that kind of thing. Yeah. Especially so. with Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Uh, what did the 10 sell for? The 10 of like the one... standard copy yeah. went for 140 
thousand, I believe. The ten of the standard copy. Yeah. And what about the collector's copy? Was that I thought it was a ten standard that sold? Was it? 10? I think it's collectors. Oh, okay. Sorry. I well, think it is. If it was, then one hundred and forty. Yeah. It was yeah, like okay. golden, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At golden. Yes. Was it a collector's? No, I'm not. It's everything. collectors. Yeah, because that's the only one higher than mine. Right. Okay. So you yeah. have a nine eight. There's a ten. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yours has a ceiling. Yeah. Yours has a built-in ceiling, essentially. I mean, the ceiling's hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. You are forever second highest graded copy. Yeah. 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 That's all I mean. For sure. Yeah. So don't think you're too special, pal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. I have an eight point five over here. Same game. <laughs> Check your privilege. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, that that's insane. Yeah. A huge congrats to you. And you just found that chilling in a random game store. Yeah, uh, you know. Two hours from us. Just like two hours away. Yeah, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Like, you never know what you'll find in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Literally, right? Yeah. They just, just chilling on the second highest graded copy that exists of this yeah. game. Yeah. And you know what? If that... that that little defect in the shrink wasn't there man that would be great yes but, yeah it was like the tiniest of scratches or something on yeah, the side i think i remember yeah that's the only thing holding it back from a plus plus yeah otherwise it's like yeah that's otherwise it's case fresh i it mean is it case is fresh. case fresh yeah literally yeah, case it is fresh. literally case fresh yeah yeah, yeah it's <laughs> kind of nuts yeah that's insane um whatever you do obviously we got to keep in the loop here yeah as we as you update and you get it back and all this stuff yeah and you get for offers sure. if you get you know yeah because it's just interesting following real time you know, you picked it up at the game store, mm -hmm. you dropped it off at WADA, you got it graded 9.8. This is like a real life example here. Yeah. Now it's like, oh man, you have something where you didn't know it was going to be worth this. What do you do? Yeah. So if you end up consigning it, if you end up selling it, trading it, definitely let us know. Yeah, Keep us for in sure. the loop. And I also graded one more thing, which is that uh, Power VR Resident Evil. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. I mean, yeah. you, we were talking about Pokemon. And, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Japanese, like, no, I think. Forget honestly. all that. I care about the Resident <laughs> Evil Power VR. The one you actually, like, personal collection, I believe, on this yeah, one, right? Yeah, yeah, because it's just such a such a rare oddity. I what was is like, it? So it's, it's the... It's Japanese, Japanese game. It's the very oh, You've already first... lost half the audience. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't touch that. <laughs> oh, that's a Japanese NTSC game. NTSCJ, like... what's that? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the very first PC port of Resident Evil. And it has full color cutscenes, and they are uncut, I believe. That's kind of the that's kind of the the thing about it. The claim to fame. The claim to fame. Yeah, so the very first port of the game. That's really cool. Very very rare. It's very rare CIB. Um, almost it pretty much impossible sealed. Like I've the mine is the only one I've ever seen. Besides, I was about to say yours is sealed, of course. Yeah, yeah. besides yeah. photos of one, you know, from like ancient ancient Google times. <laughs> what grade did you get on this? Nine six eight plus. Oh man, beautiful. It was good. Beautiful. Yeah. And it, it was one that desperately needed cleaning. So I paid for cleaning on that one too. It was very dirty. And how's it look now? Like how'd the cleaning do? The the photos look great. Oh fantastic. Yeah. Worth that ten dollar investment or That's whatever right. it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. It I think any disc based games, yeah, you should definitely clean them definitely yeah i totally forgot you got that one graded um, yeah 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 because you know you. what i i would have sent it but it's like you know just what if you well know? you have been burned already by customs so i get it you're yeah. a little more gun shy now yeah and it's and you know it's I, i'd never find another one yeah and it's just like man i'm going anyway i might as well just yeah put these in some acrylic and take them with me i agree 100 percent. yeah if i was I, I would do the exact same given i just had mine uh sit in customs for four days it arrived at Wada the other day. I, I don't know. If On the way there? Yeah. Sat oh, in okay. customs for four days. <gasps> oh, my God. Who knows what happened, right? I have no idea. Wada hasn't unboxed it yet. It's not scanned. So I... right now I am sitting in the, uh, like, the... Um, <laughs> Ah, oh, the Schrodinger's spot here. Yeah, yeah. Where the games are both perfect still and they are destroyed. I yeah, have no idea. That's right. You don't know Customs until you open the box. Customs might have ripped them all open right now. I have no clue what happened. So I get why you uh, wanted to drop them off in person. It's terrifying, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know... It's funny because like when you're dealing with stuff like artwork, it's it's a bit less nerve wracking in some ways because it's like, you know, you can't really do much to it unless you like shove a knife through the box. But they're not going to rip your thing apart, yeah. at least looking inside the shreds of paper if there's yeah. like, you know. Yeah, exactly. They're literally going to smash open your games looking for drugs inside. Yeah, it's games just like, are like just, please don't. they're just so fragile, you know, Seal, especially sealed games like man you you look at them wrong and you're, <laughs> you're losing grade there literally especially with like sega saturn cd and stuff like yeah. even shipping that stuff is just scary because it'll just crack in shipment yeah my um my one right now has an 8.5 on it it says crack in the front and mm. like i combed over the pre-grade photos and i can't see it mm. like i've reached out and i'm like like 
what like you know what i mean what happened where is it just point it out to me that's all i want yeah. i don't care just point it out to me in the pre-grade it just cracked from existence oh, where is it <laughs> right like where is it so yeah i mean that is yeah game we play on the topic of big games though big game sales uh, did you see on Golden? Well, this is kind of a two-parter here because first, I guess, with Nintendo Switch, we had Nintendo World Championships and the Yes Edition came out. Right. Did you pre-order that? No. You said that so confidently. How come? Is that just, like, doesn't... I just didn't really know about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm not into, like, speculating on modern collector's editions and stuff. And the game itself, it's like, uh, you do little challenges, speed running. Yeah. Like, it's like... I would, I would like, download it or, like, it's okay. on the on the shop, right? I'm sure it is. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I'd, I'd do that for sure. But, but as far a, as ba buying, like, the box edition... You get a replica gold cartridge and some, like, plastic trading cards or something. Yeah, but there's going to be how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of those printed. It looks like you can buy it at retail right now, too, actually. Yes. Like, it looks like, um, yeah, people are reporting on Reddit and stuff that it's available. If you want one right now, you can go to... Best Buy, Walmart, Target. Yeah. You might actually just be able to find it on the shelf still. Yeah. So for anyone who did pre-order it, hoping you would immediately be flippable, does not no seem dice. to be the case. Yeah, doesn't yeah. seem to be the case. Yeah. Um, I did buy one. Okay. Because I am, I just like Nintendo World Championship. It's cool. I like what it's it cool is. if that's like your thing and you like it. I think it's a great. It's not too big. It's like a kind of a yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a midsize. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nothing that's like intrusive. Yeah. So I appreciate that about it. And yeah, I'm just a big NES guy, so it's like, ah, I'll, I'll, I'll toss that on my shelf. That's yeah. a nostalgia kick. Yeah, that's cool. But with that coming out, at the same time, uh, this weekend, it would have been, what day is it now? Like the 19th? Uh, it would have been like the 15th. Yes, 19th. So on the 15th, I think, we'll say that. July 15th. July. Oh my God. <laughs> Where know. am I? <laughs> when the, it's like, you know, those days in, when you're in school and like the summer comes around and like, what month is it? Truly. Is it? Wow. So anyways, the July 15th weekend, I believe it was, um, Golden Auctions sold off a CGC 6.0 Nintendo World Championships actual NES cartridge for $78,000, which is a brand new record price ever paid for a 6.0. And on Golden Auctions itself, this 6.0 sale is very, very close to the same price as they sold an 8.5 back in November. It only oh. went for like 80, 84. Interesting. So this 6.0 here, like it like, crushed, man. It right. crushed. Right. There's no other way to put it. Yeah. This is the exact copy. Did you watch King of Collectibles on Netflix at all? Yes. Okay. So this is the copy they showed off okay. on that episode. This was Zach Geeks, yeah. I believe. I know Zach, yeah. Yep. So there we go. This was his uh, the personal copy that was shown. This is the one they sold. Yeah. So I think fully the show pumped the value of the game. Yeah. It had to have. I think so. For sure. Yeah. Because I mean, like, when you look at the the next highest copy that sold, it's like, that's looking like really good value now. <laughs> oh, the 8.5 now is a steal, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, the 8.5 Nintendo World Championship, it's hard to articulate, like, how good of a grade that is because it's like, oh, it's not even a 9. But I think there's only two 9s. Yeah. Right now, out of yeah. all great well, you have to, cartridges. Well, you, you have to look at it as such like a... it's. It's almost like a haphazardly thrown together item. Like there's just a crappy label and. Oh yeah, the 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 blue. The, the, I was gonna say the blue gleed. <laughs> I can't. They, I am blowing it here, man. The glue bleed yes. itself on the label is like destroys. Um, like that. Like yeah. basically caps you at a nine. Yeah, because yeah. Because you can just look at the label and the glue is deteriorate. It's like old Sega Genesis labels. Yeah. When the the oh, I can't even. The glue is just coming through. Yeah. So, yeah, these aren't supposed to exist in... I don't think we'll ever see, like, a 9-4. Yeah. I don't think it'll exist. Yeah, I think that's probably very optimistic. But at the same time, it's, like, it's such a unique and rare item that I think even, like, the lowest grade, as long as the label looks okay, even the lowest grade will be fairly expensive. Yeah, I, I like think... for the, someone just to have it. Yeah, I think the cost of entry right now, like, call it the floor price, is, right. like, 50 k yeah. Like, Which, I don't know if we've so seen one under 50k in two years now, three years. Yeah, so they're, you know, when you look at the price variance between grades, it's probably not all that disparate, you know. it's. Do you think it should be more disparate? Disparate. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, I agree, you know, the, the 5.0 or a 6.0 sells for 50, 60, yeah. and 8.0, 9.0, should that be 150? Like, should we see that really? Or should it be closer? There's 90 of them that exist, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, it's... <laughs> Like, 90's rare, but, like, I'll let you... Yeah. yeah, it depends on the population of the, you know, collecting base, I think. But I think it's just, it's such a unique and and important historical item that 
I don't really think condition should matter as much as it does for a lot of other things. Okay. Like for like a sealed game or for a CIB game where you have a lot of different elements going on, you know, stuff that was reproduced in the thousands and there are thousands available. You know, I see, I see high price variants, but you know, to like even get the opportunity to buy an NWC is very slim to none. So I think just given that you're probably not going to see a huge price discrepancy between grades unless it's like something massive you know like say a nine two or nine four shows up but yeah like maybe like on the... yeah maybe someone will pay up a lot to have like the best graded copy but i think everything below that i don't think will differ all that much so literally like the highest of the high should be expensive and then like everything else should be very relative between I, prices i think that would make sense to me like just like kind of, you know, working through it in my mm -hmm. limited understanding of what people are willing to pay for this thing. But well, um, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, if you have the means and um, you want the very best example. Yeah, I could see someone paying up for if especially if it's the only one in that grade. In my head, when I was actually thinking about NWC, like, yeah, there's 90 of them that exist. Um, that's confirmed copies, by the way. That's why I say 90. It's, it's what we've seen. It's photographed. We know 90 exist because I think it's like out of 260 or something, or maybe even 300 that hypothetically could exist. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, it's reasonable to, you know, we understand why there's so few that exist because they, you know, they just look like junk items. Yeah. They you aren't see? supposed to yeah. be anything. Yeah, exactly. They weren't anything. Yeah. They were just, they're lost to time like anything else. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But with that, sorry, 90 of them exist. I actually think that the conditional premiums of them should be more than they are. Hmm. Like, I think the floor should be very high, but as you go from a 6.0 to a 7.0 to an 8.0, like I would be not fine or whatever, but like, I would understand if the price like went up 50%, 100% between 6.0 to 8.0. Like if we're talking $50,000 for a five, if an 8.0 goes for 100,000 plus, I'd be like, yeah, no, I think that's fair mm -hmm. just because 90 while very limited like that is limited it's not ultra freaking rare right even just the amount that we see coming to market now of nwc in the past two or three years we've probably seen 10 plus copies 10 10 ish i'll say 10 ish copies have come in the past two years that is just not the level of rarity at least in market cycle rarity mm -hmm. that i think should see it be no premiums on um, the condition that comes up. It's like, like it's not to the level of uh, Michael Jordan's rookie, like the 86 Fleer, you know, rare card. It comes up for auction every three months. Mm -hmm. I, 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 NWC with 90 could become that kind of item where we see one auctioning every three to six months. And unfortunately, that really kills perceptual rarity. Right. When you see it so often. When you just see it so often. Yeah. Sure, it's only 90, but oh, it's for sale every three to six months. You have a chance. We have, yeah. we have there's another one coming up in August. So we right. just had the golden copy sell. We have a 6.5 now coming from a uh, personal champion collection. It's John Wyman. They have his headstone thing from when he competed. They have his 12 and under trophy and they have his cartridge. So in August on Heritage, we have another chance to buy one. So it's like a bundle or is it separate? Lots? It's all separated. It's all separated out, okay. but it's all on offer. I see. Gotcha. Um, so that's at least two this year we're going to see. Yeah. Ah. You know, it's funny. Like if I throw this kind of back at myself, and I'm presented with the opportunity to buy, say, a 5.0 versus a 9.0. I would honestly rather spend less money for it. Yeah? Because, because I like don't... Like, you'd rather just get the entry-level copy. Yeah. And just say you have just one. Just to have NWC. Yeah. It's a piece of history. But, like, you know, like, looking at it... Like, you know, when you look... Let's compare Ocarinas, for example. Let's not. When you look <laughs> at... The, like, when you look at the same, you know, 8.5 versus, like, 9.810... You know, there is very different visual appeal there, especially with the seal grades being lower or higher or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, for me, looking at like a five to six NWC versus a nine, like, I don't know if I really cared that much to spend that much more money. Uh, that, uh, that's that's fair. I yeah. would say that's fair. The, uh, the variance or natural variance of cartridge condition is going to be more minimal, assuming it's not like completely gashed. Yeah, exactly. As like, a, as long as the label is like intact... I think that's like my bare minimum. Yeah. And that'll probably get you a 6, 6.5 because I mean, yeah. some of them don't look bad. Which I would be fine with. I think honestly. the 6.0 on Golden had like a stain on the uh, right hand side. And that was most of why it was right. graded down the way it was. Mm -hmm. um, 
You're probably right. And I'm, I mean, I don't have money. That's the issue. I think it's, I think that's what I, you know, it's like, yeah, I'd probably get the cheap one too. Yeah. I don't have money to be picky. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's these ultra high end collectors. I feel like there is that pickiness where it's like, well, I want two, two less specs of black on my all yeah. white label. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I want it to be pristine. Yeah. I see. I, I totally get that. I think, I think there's a lot of considerations you have to do. And it's really, I think for a lot of people with means, it's not really about the amount. It's more about the perceived value that you're getting yeah almost the uh um uh what's the prestige yeah of ownership yeah yeah and it's like you know if you if you have the opportunity to buy a 9.0 for let's say 90 grand versus the 5.0 which is let's say 50 it's like yeah maybe you might see that the 9.0 has more potential value because it's kind of more top of the pop um you have more bargaining power at the end of the day with that than you do with a 5.0 but let's say you had the chance to buy 5.0 at 30k. Yeah, you get in. You your, just get in. Your value perception is going to change a lot. Yeah. And that might look like the better buy ultimately. So it's, it's not always about the amount, but just about the perceived value, I think. Yeah, no, I, I would get in. If I could ever get a good value, yeah. quote unquote, I would get into oh, an yeah. NWC. That would be like a no-brainer. Yeah, right? I want to get in. Like yeah. I would find a way to make it work. If it's like, oh, you get this for $30,000, it's a five. It's like, okay, what am I selling? Yeah, like, exactly. You know, okay. like, right. well, seriously, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, what are, we, what are we fire sailing here so we can get in? Yeah. Because I do agree that simply having one yeah. is important enough. Yeah. Then you get to be picky. But yeah. you should probably just secure one first if mm -hmm. you want to, if, if you care. Yeah. If that's something you care about. Yeah. And not, not everyone does, which is fair, but. Oh yeah. yeah NWC is. is highly debated by people now. Yeah. If it should be the group. Yeah. But I mean, it is an incredibly important time in the history of Nintendo and the history of video games. So, you know, I see the, I see the appeal for sure. On that topic now, finally at golden auctions, they are somehow some way sourcing <laughs> their sourcing they're game hustling, has been man. on oh man 2024 and like this the, uh, they're pushing yeah so they now have coming up the thing that we've all been waiting for in this damn hobby nwc gold edition is coming for auction the literal holy grail of grails amongst nes collectors i think there's nine confirmed copies that exist now right uh, and that's out of 26 hypothetical 26 were created. Uh, one was given out to a grand prize winner or something and 25 others. I, something like that with distribution. Nintendo right. power only, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, nine, I think, are confirmed to exist. Golden is offering a 4.0 CGC copy. There's no label on it. And starting bid is $10,000. Wow. So now we talk about just getting in. We talk about if condition matters. This is now the the grail. This is the grail of NES collecting. Mm -hmm. I don't think many people would argue otherwise. Where should something like this fall? Where you have no label on it. It's a 4.0. As far as NWC Gold goes, and this is from other NES historians. They've spoken about it. Uh, this is, quote unquote, the worst copy that exists. Right. Is how you could define this copy right it's like the copy of stadium events i don't know if you saw it the guy's head is missing or something it's like head <laughs> they call it headless stadium events because yeah. someone cut out the ichabod events, yeah, yeah, ichabod crane events. <laughs> there's these little pieces of like collecting lore that are so fun but yeah arguably what could be the worst copy of nwc gold that exists coming for auction what should it end for yeah so it's going to set a public floor really is what's i don't think happen. there's been a public auction in 10 years no on nwc gold no i wouldn't even i wouldn't even know the I last time one sold think this is rough. I need to go down. Like, I need to open up a freaking historian book for this. But I think JJ Hendricks, the owner of PriceCharting.com, past yeah. owner, did a reverse auction on his on the price charting marketplace sometime in like 2014. Reverse auction? It starts at a high price and he reduces it every day until someone bites. Oh. So you start at, say, 100000 and you're like, hey, tomorrow it's 90000 Does anyone want it? Next day it's 80000 Does anything? Like, that kind of... It's dumb, in my opinion. But... <laughs> Hey, 2014 was a wild time in collecting, man. <laughs> it's the Wild West. <laughs> yeah. But I think I need to, I'm going to make a full length video about this. So I need to like open up my history books here. Okay. But I think that's the last time we saw a public auction on it. Interesting. So privately, I wrote an article on it. I'm an accomplished writer. But privately, yeah, published. Um, <laughs> privately, there was a sale for $350,000 that took place about six months ago. Okay. That was for an ungraded copy, as far as I know nice condition copy it was a cash plus trade three hundred fifty thousand dollars total value okay so where the hell does this one fall and hmm. is 350k too high because that's also like they're just you know they're guessing yeah everyone's guessing yeah they don't trade hands mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of it's kind of like art at that point you know 
I almost feel like if I was the person who owned the 4.0, I would think about having a a replacement label put on it. Really? Yeah. Like a, like a gray quality one yeah. done in the manner they would have been done just for kind of preservation purposes and eye appeal. I think I think I'm thinking it more like like a piece of art which has some damage to it, yeah. which you know, from like a preservationist perspective, it's like people who collect old signage as well. Um, they they will restore signage, and it's not considered a detriment because sometimes these signs there's only one or two that exist. Yeah, so it doesn't hurt putting it doesn't, a repro label on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I actually agree with you. Now that you like break it down, I think they should have put a fake label on it. Yeah, just- as long as you note it. Yeah, I think that yeah, it would be on the label or whatever. Yeah, but. it would be on the graded label. Yeah, but I think I think that would have been a decent idea. But there's some like there's come some controversy surrounding this copy. Is there not? Well, being labelless makes it tough. Right. Um. Apparently, I mean, this from what I know. Again, this is history book stuff here. I'm just mm-hmm. trying to remember the best I can. It showed up on Nintendo Age maybe five to ten years ago. This cartridge. And a lot of people were saying it was fake. This is not right or something. It had glue residue at some point, but I think everything was wiped off, okay. like cleaned, yeah. quote unquote. I don't know if that's a good clean to do. If you have original residue on the cartridge, this is kind of talking about like, should you just put a label on it and leave the glue? Is that glue part of provenance? But everything was stripped off it, I guess. And at the end of the day with these cartridges, I don't know if you know this, but they, they're they Legend of Zelda shells. Mm-hmm. Like these are gold shells, generic gold shells. In order to fully fake one, you would still have to get an original gray board. So faking one of these would be, you have a gray Nintendo World Championship, you got that, you take the actual real ROMs, then you'd have to custom fit the gold cartridge with the Nintendo World Championship gray one. You could do it. You could do it. It's feasible. Because there's nothing that is... Like, you just have to make sure your cut is the, uh, I don't even know if those cuts in the top right hand or left hand corner of the cartridge are like machine specific requirement, or if they were done haphazardly. Hmm. Because the, again, these are just something Nintendo kind of tossed together for the competition and stuff. Right. It might be kind of jagged. It might be kind of janky up there. Yeah. But and that's, uh, you know, speculation surrounding the cartridge. For what it's worth, CGC authenticated it now. Is there something about the screws too? Oh, well, the other person is saying it's all good. Like, um, they were saying these screws look weird on it, but I guess Kenneth, the head grader, also replied and said, no, these are fine. It just, like, looks weird. So okay. that, that'll keep bouncing around, I'm sure. I'm sure CGC is going to put out a video. They right. have to. Yeah. This is C- they, they graded a freaking NWC gold. Yeah, like, yeah. They one have one to... that, like, if anything is going to be faked, it'd be something like that. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I, we, I think you have to kind of just trust CGC did insane amounts of diligence on this yeah that would be a very big blunder oh it would be i i don't want to say it would ruin their reputation because i don't think you can ruin your reputation as a grading company in 2024 <laughs> like you're right? saying we're all sheep greg what, uh, what, <laughs> what can these companies do man right like what uh, nothing yeah nothing they're, they're fine fake books being reholdered fine like fake cards but fine you know nothing nothing's gonna, gonna pay the man yeah exactly i'm still gonna send my <laughs> stuff in tomorrow yeah so I, I have to trust it's authentic. Just where does it sit in your mind? Where Value where wise? should it, yeah like what what should this twenty twenty four NWC gold? That's a you know it's a really good question. I when you hear about the three hundred fifty k private transaction, what's your first thought? Too much. Okay, interesting. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Too you know I understand it's rare, but you know there's I think there's a lot of people that argue the the. NWC gray is the more important item because of the direct link with competition, right? But I mean, I get, you know, it's a grand prize item, so it's pretty cool. Why make 25 of them? I don't know. I guess it was for promotion and Nintendo power. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, this this cartridge, the gold one, has no actual purpose in NWC. Yeah. These were the bonus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I, I understand for, again, for someone who has means to acquire something like this, you know, even just getting the chance to buy one, you know, in and of itself is very, very difficult. So I can see them having to pay up just for getting something like that. Make a guess. For the 4.0. 4.0 labelist. I want to say like 90. Okay. You don't even think over a hundred. Yeah. Just interesting. Yeah, it just doesn't look great. Again, it doesn't. It doesn't. Again, you know, I think I think having a a really high quality repro label would have 
would have helped it a lot. But putting that on there, like, would you then say 150 if it had the repro label? Like, surely it's not going to move the needle. You just, you can't discount eye appeal. That last minute, you know, instinct of you clicking to bid. It's like, if something just looks even better, I think it helps a lot. See, coming on this, right, just because it's been so long without a public auction on this, like, so long, I have to assume there's pent up demand. Yeah. Like a lot. I think there's demand for sure. I, you know what? I think about it like a painting where someone's like whited out someone's face. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it still is what it is. But if that face was there, I think people would pay more for it. I think the absolute FOMO of not knowing when you ever might get another chance to buy one of these is going to make this cartridge push well over 100. I'm like, my personal is around 150 to 200 on it. Yeah. So we have, we know about the private sale of 350, nice cartridge. Mm-hmm. I think that, yeah, this is going to see a severe discount on that. I do. Yeah. I still think over 100 easy, more around 150 to 200 is my own guess. <laughs> Just because when, when you do, okay, you don't buy this cartridge. You're someone who wants one. You don't buy this one. Like that's it. Yeah. When the hell are you getting another chance? Yeah. You need to know that someone who knows someone who has one. Right. Who <laughs> won't try to rinse you for a million dollars. Because right. I think that's what a lot of the holders are too, where they're like, oh, well, if someone wants it, they can pay a million. Yeah. And if they don't want to pay a million, I'll just keep it. Yeah. Right. There's like, like Pat, the NES punk still has his, as far as I know. Yeah. Doesn't seem like he's going to be selling anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, well, may- maybe the price here will shake it loose or shake one loose. Yeah. It's, it's, it's difficult to say. I, you know, I feel like if, if I was in the game for something like that, I would, I would probably go the route of, of getting a replacement label and regrading it. Okay. Just to, just to help the long-term appeal of it. I think that wouldn't be a terrible idea just to, you know, fully restore it, have it looking as good as it can. Yeah. And yeah, leave everything intact. Just put a new label on it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually agree with you. Yeah, I do. And maybe we'll see that is what yeah. happens with it, but the auction ends in a month, I think, because it's part of like Golden's Elite or whatever. So I think right. it runs for almost a month. Right. So there's going to be a lot more fanfare. There's going to be a lot more conversation around this cartridge. It's uh, literally just went up today. Yeah, that's so. cool. Yeah, it's been a a wild. Yeah, and you know they probably put it up today because of the <laughs> other NWC stuff. Of course, I think like, it just launched today, didn't it? Just, I yeah. think the game launched either today or yesterday. Yeah. So you, of you're, course, that's a very smart marketing decision. You catch up on the hype and just let it let it market itself. You don't need to do anything. <laughs> Really, though, right? It's yeah. like, oh, well, have, did you play the new NES World Championship game? Well, like, we have the actual... We have the actual thing. It's the prize. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey. Well, it looks better when the uh, the collector's edition comes with, like, the replica gold cart. Yeah. Like, I'll just get the real one to go with it. Yeah. All right? Just going to open up that box. I'm going to grade that replica gold cart, and I'm going to sell it for profit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe that's You know what? You'll, I bet you'll see that maybe on eBay. I, I don't think that... Um, I need to look. I, I don't know if my copy delivered yet. But I need to know if that gold cartridge that it was included. Well, you're going to open it up. I don't know. Okay. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. But I, that gold cartridge has no electronics in it. Okay. That they included. It's so you're like saying purely... we could put the board from the 4.0 into this one. We need to gut it. <laughs> <laughs> we need to gut this one. And cut it open. Put the cartridge in there. And someone was talking about like if you could take the repro. Not that it's not even a repro. It's just plastic. If you could take the plastic cartridge included with the uh, NWC NES edition. Gut it actually. And put like a emulator board in it. So that you could pop it into an NES. That'd and be have, so like, cool. Wouldn't that be like. Like that would be fantastic. Yeah. I'm extremely saddened. I don't know if you saw the Japanese special edition of the uh, uh, World Championship edition. No. It came with two um, Joy-Cons. Oh. Which is just like better in every sh- way, shape, and form. They're like Famicom what? colored or Famicom, Famicom colored Joy-Cons. Okay. And That's we cool. get a uh, we get the replica cartridge, which has zero egg. You know. Yeah. It's tough. It's we like, get a plastic and it's they like, get. You know, Japanese mentality looking. They just they just want the repro stuff. They don't actually yeah, want Yeah, we, we want get, they give us the garbage, right? <laughs> yeah, the garbage right. to put on your shelf. And yeah, like yeah. Japan gets a pair of Joy Cons, which yeah. is just Japan gets something extra. Hell useful. of value. Yeah, that's that's value, man. Yeah. That's value. Yeah. And you know what I <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> you know what I bought today? I bought two of the N sixty four switch controllers. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Why why is that dumb? What's wrong with that? No, it's not dumb. I Are just they like, like hundred bucks each. No, they're they're like sixty five a oh, piece or something. Free. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know what? I I played Perfect Dark the other day on uh, on my Switch because it had just come out. Yep, yep. And I was like, oh, this would be so great with the original controller. I'm like, you know what? 
I've been meaning to buy those for a long time. I just went ahead and bought a couple. How's it feel compared to a real N64 controller? Uh, I don't, I'm not happy yet. Oh, okay, I just okay, bought it okay. like today or yesterday. Oh, before you yeah. got here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put yeah. the order in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to do this oh, God, now like before, they, before yeah. they discontinue it. <laughs> yeah, right. You can buy those things like by the bundle. While you're driving over here, just swerving in traffic while you're trying to get the order in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's Nintendo. They could cancel like it's it It's Prime Day. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's Prime Day. Yeah. Prime Nintendo Day. Yeah. I need to get these in stat. Yeah. That's right. No, be, I wanted to try out one of those N64 Switch controllers. But like the seventy dollar price tag just hurts. I know it just does. Yeah, and I I bought two of them because so I'm like, yeah, maybe I want to. Maybe there'll be like a rare moment one year. Well, I'll, I'll have a friend. I over. was about to say <laughs> like the, the, the one rare time when the you actually time. yeah yeah can't put a price on that, Greg. I I, I gotta come yeah. over and try out that free controller. That's right. right. <laughs> Here you go, that's right. one that's brand new, like it's never been just touched. for you and yeah, me. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but thanks for listening to you guys. If you're on the YouTube, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know your thoughts. The NWC Gold coming up. Let us know your thoughts. There's gonna be more content coming on that, so we're gonna follow that sale as it goes. If you're all listening on iTunes or wherever, rate and uh, rate and what can you do? Rate and rate and rate uh, follow, subscribe. <laughs> Yeah, you get, rate and review. I always want you guys to comment on the uh, the podcast. It's such a shame people can't. Yeah. But anyways, well, comment on the YouTube's. Yeah, comment on the YouTube. Join the Discord. Free link. Yeah, come and complain on Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. Bye.